of Congressman Martin Romualdez ang problema ng bayan na ito. Dental fund, meron po bang line item po? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. You are recognized, ma'am. Um, a message, sir, or uh, my statement regarding the point of order? Message? Mga kababayan, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum, warakmatulahi wa barakatu, madayaw, mayong adlaw, kaninyong tanan, magandang araw sa inyong lahat. The officials of the Office of the Vice President as well as each and every one of our satellite leads, satellite office leads, were in receipt of a letter from the Chairman of the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability dated dated September 13, 2024, requesting our presence or that of our duly authorized representatives in today's initial deliberation with preliminary determination on privilege speech number 379. In view of the said letter, I am appearing before you today not only as the head of office, but more importantly, as the duly authorized representative of all officials of the OVP. Simply because we have, done, we have not done anything wrong. There is no misuse of funds. If there are audit findings, we shall gladly respond to them before the Commission on Audit. And if there are legitimate cases to be filed, then we shall gladly respond to them before the appropriate courts. In relation to this, may I just say that I take notice of the opening speeches and um, nasabi doon, there is a determination of misfeasance, nonfeasance, and malfeasance. And... Um, those are cases that should properly be taken in the courts of law. What we are witnessing now is no ordinary legislative inquiry. This exercise is a well-funded and coordinated political attack. This much is evident from the very words of the privilege speech that prompted this inquiry. A speech that simply meant to say, do not vote for Sara on 2028. It is clear to me that this inquiry is not about misused funds, accountability, or governance. Instead, it is solely aimed at discrediting my name and my office to prevent future political contests. I have publicly stated my reasons as to why I've chosen not to defend the OVP's budget proposal for 2025. I have narrated the issues I encountered in previous years which can easily be confirmed by looking at the NEP, the GAB, and the GAA for fiscal years 2023 and 2024. Further. I have even shared the drama that transpired last year regarding the confidential funds. Hence, just as we have done last year, we again leave the 2025 OVP budget to the pleasure of Congressman Martin Romualdez. I am not asking for any special treatment nor am I asking you to uphold any tradition. There is no disrespect. All I am saying is that you have the complete freedom to do whatever you wish with the OVP budget. If you feel that all the documentary submissions are not enough, then by all means, wag kayo magbigay ng budget. Sa totoo lang, Hindi naman ang budget ang puntiriyan ninyo dahil napakadali naman 
magtanggal ng budget. What you are trying to do is make a case for impeachment. Hindi naman ako kakandidato sa nalalapit na eleksyon. Hindi ako namumulitika. Ang ginagawa ko lamang ay ang pagtupad sa aking oath of office at campaign platforms na trabaho, edukasyon, at maya mapayapang pamumuhay. Sinabi ko na noon, at ilang beses ko nang inulit na hindi ako ang problema ng bayan na ito. Ang totoong problema ng bayan ay kagutuman, kahirapan, illegal na droga, kriminalidad, terorismo, hindi nasapat na healthcare, kalidad ng edukasyon, kawalan ng plano ng infrastruktura para sa disasters, at marami pang iba. So, you may try to destroy me, you can skin me alive, and throw my ashes to the wind. But let it be known, you will find me unbowed. I will continue to serve the Filipino people no matter the personal cost or political intrigue. Having said that, I will not allow myself to be subjected to an inquiry based on an empty privilege speech just so you can attack me and do indirectly what you failed to do directly during the budget hearings. I therefore request this committee to terminate this inquiry for its clear lack of any proposed legislation or substantive matter for discussion. Shukran. The committee cannot uh, rule on that because the committee already took cognizance of this uh, uh, privileged speech. Anyway, uh, we will now proceed. Uh, next, uh, we will recognize the Mr. representative Chair. from COA. Mr. Chair. A Congressman uh, Marcoleta. May I please raise a parliamentary inquiry? What is your parli parliamentary inquiry? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The rules of the committee says that this committee only acquires jurisdiction on matters of nonfeasance, misfeasance, malfeasance. And under Section 2, Mr. Chair of the Rules, there should be a prior determination whether or not these malfeasance, nonfeasance, and misfeasance are directly or specifically relating to the person's charge of this. Has this committee made a prior determination of this? And if so, when did it happen? And where is the order specifying that the committee has just reached a prior determination? This is very important, Mr. Chair, because the rules also say that after determining or making a prior determination, this committee will set an order, and that is the only way that this committee acquire jurisdiction over the person's subject matter of this inquiry. And that particular order of prior determination will set out the parameters. If I can make a comparison, Mr. Chair, in regular court, it is called pre-trial order, where the parameters of the inquiry, the presentation of evidence or explanations or allegations are limited to that set of stipulation. So considering, Mr. Chair, and I assume that there is no prior determination, I do not think how we can start the meeting today because we are supposed to observe the rules. I am referring to Section 2 of the rules of this committee, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So nung 2022 po na budget ng Office of the Vice President sa DBM, Mr. Chair, meron po ba ditong nakalagay 
na line item for confidential funds. Please address the chair. Ah, uh, Mr. When chair. Answering. Mr. Chair. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Sa uh, DBM po, please. Uh, you are unpalanced. You say Toledo. You are recognized. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, there is no uh, line item for confidential fund, but there is a program that it in uh, item under that uh, program po na uh, ginagamit po yung confidential fund po. Um, I'm not satisfied with the answer. Ang tinatanong ko lang po, meron bang line item doon sa doon sa budget ng Office of the President na confidential fund? Meron po bang line item po? Yes or no? There is no, Madam yes. Chair. But Mr. Chair. Okay. How about noong 2023? Uh, budget of the Office of the Vice President. Is there a line on about confidential funds? Uh, there is, uh, Madam Ch uh, Mr. Chair, there is a line item for con Magkano item. po, Magkano po uh, Mr. Chair, yung uh, confidential funds of the Office of the Vice President for 2023? Uh, 500... Uh, million, um, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. You're correct. Kasi nandito naman, uh, meron naman tayong ano dyan. Um, okay. So, kung compare natin, Mr. Chair, yung Office of the Vice President budget GAA 2022 and GAA 2023, so makikita natin agad-agad yung difference. No? Na yung confidential funds sa Office of the Vice President Nung 2022 ay wala, pero sa Office of the Vice President sa 2023 ay meron. Okay, so paano po nagkaroon ng, ng 125 million na confidential funds ang Office of the Vice President noong 2022, Mr. Chair, sa DBM? Uh, okay, Mr. Chair. While the OVP has no provision for the confidential funds under the fiscal year 2022 GAA, uh, the said release of funds was charged against the contingent fund using the existing uh, PAP of the Office of the Price President, which that is the uh, Good Governance Program, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Well, ano po yung ibig sabihin ng good governance program po? Uh, kasi defined, alam, alam, alam po natin ano, meron tayong JC o Joint, joint Circular Governing um, Confidential Funds. So, uh, can, you, um, can you elaborate on good governance, uh, Mr. Chair, yung binabanggit ninyo po? The good governance is a program of the OVP and... Uh, so that's the basis for us to, for the uh, uh, release of the uh, confidential plan of the vi Office of the Vice President, Mr. Chair. Well, can you el elaborate? Ano ba yung good governance? Dahil uh, malinaw po no, doon sa rules or, or the joint circular governing confidential funds, yung mga pwede lang napondohan ng... Uh, confidential funds, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we have already responded to that query. Inquiry. Our, uh, we have already sent already the uh, letter uh, to uh, uh, dated September 11, 2023, as to what is the uh, all about the good governance program of the OVP, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this representation has no copy of what you are referring to as the good governance programs. Um, may I request for the copy, Mr. Chair? Please take note of the manifestation of Congressman Castro Comsec. Um, would you like to respond, Comsec? 
Your Honor, as to part the part of the Committee Secretariat, we have not received a document from the Department of Budget Management. We have sent an invitation on September 13. We are not in receipt of a position paper or any document dated September 11, Your Honor. It might be a different committee. Okay. But just the same, yes, I may uh, respond to the inquiry uh, as far as what is all about the good governance program, particularly the good governance uh, uh, engagement and social services projects. This is uh, in consideration of the urgency of the uh, safe implementation of various projects and activities of the Office of the Vice President across its satellite offices for the last, okay. Uh, the conduct of its official engagement and functional representation in international and local events, the implementation of various projects and activities relevant to national security and peace and order, and implementation of the same with proper security and safety protocols for the benefit of the institution. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair.